But first, the U.S. meeting with China this week to try and hash out a trade deal before that March 1st deadline. On Thursday, I sat down with Secretary of State Mike Pompeo to discuss China and telecom company Huawei and how the Chinese telecom giant is posing a threat for the U.S.'s privacy and national security. Here's Secretary Pompeo. They are creating a real risk for these countries and their systems, the security of their people. Europeans care deeply about their privacy. Uh, the risk to privacy from this technology is very, very real. And we're, we're out sharing this information, the knowledge that America has gained through its uh, vast network, and uh, making sure countries understand the risk. That's important. We think they'll make good decisions when they understand that risk. It's not even just the risks for them. It's the risks for the world. I mean, if you are in high-level talks about national security with Poland, with the five eyes. I mean, your Americans' information is out you there, bet. too, because China has tapped into their network. There's, there's a second piece that we've shared with them as well, which is if a country adopts this and puts it in some of their critical information systems, we won't be able to share information with them. Really important headline right there. And joining me right now is the chairman and CEO of Cisco. That's Chuck Robbins. And Chuck, it is great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. It's great to be here. I, I want to get your reaction to this whole Huawei issue. I know that Huawei is a competitor of yours. Um, look, the Europeans pushed back when, when uh, the secretary was uh, overseas last week and said, look, we have already invested all of this money in Huawei. How are we going to redo our whole telecom infrastructure? We should point out that this is all subsidized. The governments have already chosen Huawei years ago. Yeah, you know, the, these customers around the world have made decisions, and, and most of them are using a combination of our technology and other providers' technology. You're, you're going to find a very small number of telecom providers around the world who have a single vendor, right? We, we've built an incredible network in India with Reliance Geo, and that's pretty much our stuff, but then the radio network comes from a third party. So there, there are investments that have been made, and, and these, these issues are clearly between the government, United States government, European government leaders and you know they have to make these decisions uh, between them about what's going on what we focus on right now is we're just focused on delivering the innovation that's needed to actually take advantage of these major technology transitions that are getting ready to occur. I mean there there are analysts out there I've got a couple of analyst reports here that believe that Cisco is going to get uh, market share gains as a result of the questions around Huawei. Putting that aside for a moment, are you seeing an increase in business around security in general? I mean, this is becoming a hotter and hotter issue with, with a lot of fear around it. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a couple of aspects to this question. First of all, our security business last quarter grew 18%. So we are one of the largest security providers for enterprise and, and government customers around the world. You know, we're blocking in excess of 20 billion threats a day for our customers. And so that part of our business continues to ramp and, and the threat surface is increasing and it's just we're seeing more and more threats every day. Then as you, as you look at the other issues that are occurring around the world, I think that you know, as our customers look to make decisions now, they're assessing not only the innovation, which we're focused on, but they're also assessing trust. They're, ass they're assessing how secure do they believe the products are, and, and these are becoming more and more important criteria for their decisions. Yeah, so. because you're seeing all of these cyber intrusions. Right. Characterize how bad it is. You know, we were talking with the Secretary of State yesterday, and he basically said, look, we're talking about thousands of cyber intrusions a day, whether it's China, Russia, North Korea. We know who the bad actors are. You, you, you must have, obviously, incredible intelligence on how many attacks are attempted. Well, I mean, if you, just, if you just look at the customers that our products are defending, because we see the threats and then we aggregate the threats so that we can dynamically defend other customers. So when we see a new threat coming in in, in Asia, we actually correlate it and then we dynamically update networks in Europe, technology in the U.S. to actually protect against that threat. We're seeing billions a day, billions wow. on a global basis. So it is... Um, now, these aren't all new, but there are, it's, it's massive, and it's just increasing. And again, as we move into IoT and we add more connected devices, it, threat surface gets bigger, more attacks. In, in your last earnings uh, call, you were pretty confident on the macro environment. Tell us what you're seeing in terms of enterprise uh, spending, in terms of businesses putting money to work, getting ready for 5G. How would you characterize what you're seeing today and your anticipation for the year? Well, if you look at our orders last quarter, uh, which ended, you know, I think it was four or five weeks ago, um, we had 
you know, our enterprise business was up double digits. Our mid-market commercial business was up 7% globally. Our public sector business globally, our orders were up like 18%. So we saw very consistent demand. Our service provider business, which is where the 5G spend is going to come, was slightly down, down like 1%. Um, but we don't expect the 5G build-outs to really start in mass until 2020. But um, we saw, you know, we saw very consistent demand from the first day of the quarter to the end. We saw it across customer segments. We saw it across geographies. I mean, Europe, Middle East, and Africa orders were up 11 percent for us. So um, Asia was up mid single digits. U.S. was up 7 percent. So we we saw really consistent, uh, you know, demand uh, across. Now there's clearly there continues to be lots of geopolitical risk. I mean, if if the trade talks go sideways, and who knows what happens. Yeah. Uh, one of the analysts at Goldman Sachs said that the biggest surprise for him was the very high order rate for the public sector. Yeah. You mentioned the 18 percent. I mean, th that's it's been 2 percent going back all the way to, for, to 2010. So what happened? Yeah, you know, I think the uh, there's a couple things that are going on. First of all, this technology is now, you know, it, it's at the heart of the strategy of our customers. It's no longer enabling their strategy. It is actually... They're, they're taking the technology and then they're defining their strategy based on what it makes possible. So a lot of the, a lot of the focus over the last decade has been around consumer tech. Right? We've t if, if it's on your phone, you know what it does. If, it's, if you use social media app, then you know what it does. But what, what we do, do isn't that clear to the everyday you know, investor. That's right. Or, uh, and so uh, the technology that we're building are really enabling our enterprise customers and public sector customers to, to digitize and, and really take advantage of new, new methods of revenue stream in the case of public sector, new ways of delivering citizen services, putting video connectivity out into rural areas and delivering citizen services virtually. I mean, there's all these things that are happening which are leading to, you know, continued demand. And, and there's all this expectation that it continues leading up to 5G. Right. And what happens then? This week I had a Fox Business exclusive with the chairman and CEO of AT&T, Randall right. Stevenson, who you know very well. And he says 5G changes everything. Here's what he said. I'll kind of get your reaction to yeah. this. Listen to this. Growth, as we look into the future, is, you mentioned at the very beginning, it's 5G. And I, I have seen a lot of technological innovation in this industry over my 36-year career. I have yet to witness what we're about to see in 5G. This is going to change everything. This, this becomes, you talk about a faster network, it's more than that. This is an instantaneous network. No latency is what the technical term is, but it is an immediately responsive network. What, what about that? Tell us what this means and when this would be a reality. Because I know that these, this is not in the market today. No, but we've been talking about it for many years, and I think... And the retooling has begun. It has begun, and the, and the, the trials are beginning this year. I mean, you've, you've, you've heard some of our customers talk about it. I think this is one of those great examples where the hype building up for this, is the reality is going to match the hype. I mean, the, the fundamental difference that this technology is going to bring, you're going to see, you know, speeds... In 2022, you're going to see speeds that average four to five times more of what we get today. And if you think about what it enables, not only higher speeds and lower latency for mobile devices, but you're, you're, we're going to be able to get connectivity into rural areas that we haven't been able to because the cost of digging trenches and, and laying fiber have just been prohibitive. But now we can do this with 5G. So we're going to be able to connect people who have not been connected before. Uh, we believe, we, you know, we, we've done a study and we believe in 2022 there will be over 400 million 5G connections. Wow. And, um, and as you know, what happens is when you, when you get to a place where you have all of this, this high bandwidth capacity out at the edge of the network, then the core infrastructure has to be updated to actually accommodate that. And that's, that's one of the big roles that we're going to play is uh, delivering innovation that actually allows our customers to to deal with all this traffic. Yeah, it's amazing that the wireless business keeps growing. I mean, they find wireless customers, whether it's people like what you're talking about that haven't had the connection and haven't had right. any, a fast connection, certainly, and, and sometimes you're, there are areas where you just don't have good broadband right. uh, still. Right. Um, or there are other situations where people are taking on one and two phones. And that's not even including things like the smart appliances and the autonomous cars. So that is also going to get powered up with, with uh, 5G. Yeah, I mean, 5G is going to provide everything from the ability to connect IoT devices, so things in your home, 
um, vehicles, all the way to connecting enterprise branch locations because the whole notion of lower latency is really what's required to do real-time video applications. And so if you think about what this is going to create, we believe in 2022 that the amount of new traffic created in that year will actually exceed all the traffic that's been created since the inception of the internet. Wow. 